you know, the older I get, the more it seems that I think about heaven. And of course, you know, the older I get, um, there are more and more people in my life that get called to home, to heaven. Um, just yesterday, uh, my last remaining aunt on my dad's side passed away, Aunt Lorraine. And um, she was such a wonderful woman, a, f a phenomenal wife, uh, an, an excellent mom, grandmom, great grandmom. And she, uh, she took care of things uh, when all of her kids were growing up, um, to my knowledge, without ever fussing about anything. She was just a wonderful woman. And, you know, over the past several years, I've spent a good bit of time um, reading about and, and studying about heaven. And certainly we, you know, we all long to see those that have gone on before us. Uh, there's a void there, a void that never gets filled. Um, it, it, it's, it's part of life. It's it's things that we learn how to deal with and we learn how to move on in life and those kinds of things. But then we come around to the book of Revelation and, and the book of Revelation is, is um, the only book in the Bible that <clears throat> promises a blessing for those who read it or those who hear it. And a lot of people will look at the book of Revelation and they'll think, you know, well, the book of Revelation is, is all about it's all about the tribulation period and God pouring out his wrath on the earth. And it's all about Satan. It's all about the beast and the mark of the beast. It's all about the false prophet and, and all of that kind of good stuff. And all of them at the end get rolled up into one big bundle and thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone and those kinds of things. But that's not what the book of Revelation is really about. I mean, he mentions those things. But the book of Revelation is really about Jesus. It's about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It's about our Savior. It's about the Lion and tribe of Judah. It, it, it's, it's so much more than what we would ever think about the book of Revelation was. <clears throat> It's, it's almost, to think about it, it's almost incomprehensible to, to be able to put handles on what heaven is truly going to be like. We have in chapter 4 a glimpse of some things in heaven. You know, it, it, John was was spiritized basically he was he was caught up in the spirit and, and a voice that he heard that came through the open door into heaven said come up here and so john is going to tell us a few things <clears throat> that he experienced in heaven let me read for you the the scripture text revelation chapter 4 i'll read again verse verse 1 through 11 um Last time I read 1 through 11, we only made it through verse 1. <laughs> um, but I, I'm going to try my best to cover all of chapter 4 today. So let me read it for you. After this, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. After what? After the church age. Verse 2. At once I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven and well, with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian, which is, again, that, that reddish-brown stone. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders, clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne 
there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him with lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created. So my first point is this, we see as we have a glimpse of heaven that the triune God is there. You have God the Father, and you have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and you have Jesus, the Son of God, they're all there. At once I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. So, so if, if you can realize that over 2,000 years ago, John was on the Isle of Patmos. And he is taken up in the spirit. Now, this isn't just John having an opportunity to go to heaven to see what's there in the time that he was on the Isle of Patmos. You have to understand that what John is seeing is going on in heaven today. So John was, was, was jerked up and forward you know, about 2,000 years or so. And he sees all of this going on. The one John saw seated on the throne can only be described by comparisons to the most beautiful objects like, like precious stones, like jasper and carnelian, and, and some, some uh, Bibles have uh, sardis, which is actually a little bit darker brown than carnelian. And these stones are in the, the breastplate of the priests. There is a stone for each one of the 12 tribes of Israel. And so this is the first stone and the last stone in the breastplate. I just, I find that interesting, how God just kind of, brings all of this together. And, and anybody that would have known John or had heard uh, the, uh, the writings of the book of Revelation would, would understand that and would know that those were the first and the last stone. Revelation 3, 21 has, has Jesus promising to the overcomers that they will sit with him on the throne. And we know the Spirit is standing there before the throne. So the whole Godhead is there, Father, Son, and Spirit, at the throne in heaven. That's the first point. The second point is this. It says in the second half of verse 3 of chapter 4 that surrounding the throne is a rainbow. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian, and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of emerald. It must have been very, very beautiful. This, this emerald green rainbow that surrounded the throne that John saw. And he goes back to God's promises in Genesis chapter 9, verses 13 through 16, that he will never ever destroy the earth again without extending a measure of mercy to the remnant. So I believe that, that what John sees, this rainbow that he sees, is a sign 
that God will have mercy on those overcomers that Jesus was talking about to the church and not judge them like he's going to judge the earth beginning with chapter 6. And, and as I said last week, know that while tribulation is happening on earth, that this is literally God pouring out wrath on the earth. The church is not there. The church is not there. The church is safe in heaven and reminded of God's great mercy because of this rainbow. The third point is this. Sitting around the throne are the 24 elders, and this is verse 4. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. And there are a lot of people who, who really st stretch this thing about 24. Um, they try to come up with this number 24 from everything that you can imagine. And so who are the 24 elders? You know, they're, they're certainly not um, angels. They're certainly not two members from each tribe of Israel. Um, I believe we can go back to the Bible and identify who these are in three ways. By the praise of their lips, and by the clothes that they wear, and by the crowns that they have. So the first one is this, letter A, by the praise of their lips. If we go to Revelation chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, it says, And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And, and so the, the elders will be singing a particular song in heaven. In, in that song, the, they'll sing... Uh, um, uh, about the redeemed. It, it, it will be a song uh, for the redeemed, to the redeemed, because of the Lamb of God. And so, honestly, this can only mean one thing. These 24 elders are the church, and they represent the church in heaven. Now, let's look further. Let's go to, uh, to B. Let her be. By the close of their bodies, Revelation chapter 19, verses 7 and 8. Uh, it says, um, let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen and bright and pure for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. So they're, they're dressed with these, with these white robes. They're the redeemed. They're the bride of Christ, the bride of the Lamb. And they're dressed in this white because of their righteousness. This is the bride of the Lamb. Letter C is this. By the crowns on their heads, this is back to chapter 4, verse 4. And around the throne were 24 thrones, and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. So there, there are two kinds of crowns mentioned in the Bible. One is a diadem. Now that, that's, the, that's the crown that Jesus will have. That's a diadem. The other crown is, is Stephanos. And that's a crown that like um, an athlete would have, um, a victor, um, somebody who won a race would have the Stephanos crown. And so the, the elders have these Stephanos crowns. They, they've been given to the church at the judgment seat of Christ. It's, it's the rewards that the church gets for doing the job of the church while here on earth. You go to heaven, you stand in front of, of Jesus Christ, not to determine if you can go to heaven or not, if you're a Christian already. Um, you go and you receive rewards, crowns. And so this is, again, representing the church in heaven. Point number four is, verse five, we see the around the throne, lightning, thunder, voices, 
And, and you, uh, if you remember back whenever Moses went up to Mount Sinai, the same thing happened. There was lightning and thunder and voices and, and it was just freaking everybody out because it was so loud. It says, from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits, the sevenfold spirit of God. So, today, um, today we're not in a time of judgment. Today we are in a time of grace. And this, this time of grace extends through the end of the, of the church age. Whenever the fullness of the church age has happened, grace will be removed and we'll go back to a time, or people who are here, we'll go back to a time of judgment. The day of grace. And you know, I, if people really understood this, this thing called grace, I think it would make a difference in their lives. I think that there would be more people who would who would come to know Jesus Christ because once grace is removed it's a time of judgment let's go on point number five is verse six and before the throne there was as it were a sea of glass like crystal and around the throne on each side of the throne are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind so you know, there are things that you look at, um, and and I read a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of scholars, uh, commentaries, and things on on this, and and you know there are some similarities along the way. There are some people who say that um, it, it's it's it re, um, it's referencing something that was inside the temple, um, and all those kinds of things. Actually, th this is this is is a sea of glass. Uh, it, it's it's solid, but it is something that I think is used to separate the throne from other things around it. Let's look at verse six. And before the throne, there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, are four living creatures, full of eyes in front and back. Exodus chapter 24 verse 10 says, And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. And Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 21 verse 21 says, And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. So this is this is is like a barrier or a separator, if you will. All part, all very very beautiful, and part of the throne. Let's look at point number six. The living creatures are in the midst of the throne. This is verses seven and the first part of eight. The first living creature like a lion. The second living creature like an ox. The third living creature with the face of a man. The fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures each of them with six wings are full of eyes all around and within. So most scholars say that these, these are either cherubim or seraphim. I'm going to go with cherubim because I just think that's really cool. The Greek word here is zoan, zoan, and, and it means uh, living creatures, living creatures. So there are four living creatures and I believe these are the, the same living creatures that uh, Ezekiel saw um, in uh, Ezekiel chapter 10, verses 14 through 17. And, and I'm not going to read that for you. If you want to read it later, you, you can. It talks about the, the, the living creatures there and what they look like, and it's very, very similar to how they're described in Revelation chapter 4. So they're, they're standing around the throne, ready to assist God, with whatever he needs and for whatever reason. But their biggest purpose 
is leading in worship. Point number seven, this is my last point. Um, verse, the last part of verse eight through verse 11. And day and night they never cease to say, these are the four living creatures, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who is, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. So, it's very important for us to, to understand this little section from the last part of verse 8 through the end of the chapter, through the, the end of verse 11. Because as we go through the book of Revelation, what we're going to find is worship, 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 worship. It's all worship. And, and remember last week, you know, I, I, I told some of you that whenever you get to heaven, you're going to be a little uncomfortable because you're afraid somebody's going to here you worship. It's not going to make any difference to anybody in heaven. Worship, 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 worship. It's all about worship. And, and the way that this is written, this, this holy, 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 is like holy, holier, holiest are you Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And, and, and it's like, it's like, the, the, the emotions behind this worship um, reaches a fever pitch. How many of you, did you, did you know that, that, that there really was a point in time in our history as a nation that, that there was no Starbucks? <laughs> People actually really had to make their own coffee. And I remember... One of the coffee pots from whenever I was a little bitty guy. Um, it, was a, it was kind of a metal coffee pot. And uh, you didn't have filters. You had a little, a little can. A little uh, uh, stand that goes up the middle of it. And you put coffee grinds in this, in this little can. And you put a top down over it. And you set it on the stove. And as it got hot, water would start inching its way up through that little stem. And then you would hear, bloop, 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 bloop. And that water would come up and filter down through that can and make some of the best coffee you've ever had in your life. Well, so as the water got hot, then it started bubbling up, reaching a fever pitch, 212 degrees or whatever it is. I don't know exactly, but it starts, it starts boiling and comes up. And, 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 and so it's just, you know, it starts off kind of one level, and then the next thing you know, you've got, you got this water boiling up through there and making coffee. So you take that, and you take the four living creatures, and they're, they're standing in front of the throne, and they're like, holy, 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 holy. And the Bible says whenever. What, 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 what kind of a schedule is that? Whenever. Whenever they start, holy, holy. I, I just know that these, these 24 elders who are representing the church probably start getting goosebumps. You know, and they're like, oh, oh, something's about to happen. Something about to come loose here. Oh, oh, and it just, it, holier, holiest. And then the, 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 the 24 elders 
can't take it anymore. And so they take off their crowns, the rewards that Jesus gave them for their work here on this earth, and do what with it? They give it all back to Jesus. Why? Why do they give it away? Why do they give it back to Jesus? Because he's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of all glory and honor. He is worthy. That's what's important. So, do you miss those that are your loved ones that have gone on to glory? Yes. Yes, you do. A lot. I know that my aunt's children are going to miss her terribly. Will they want to see her whenever they go to heaven? Yeah, they, they will want to see her whenever they go to heaven. But you know who the main one is that they will want to see? Jesus. <laughs> Why? Because he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. A little song that we used to sing kind of goes like this. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory, glory and honor, glory and honor and praise. For thou hast created, hast all things created. Thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure, they are created for thou art worthy O lord he is worthy he is worthy so in closing today let me ask you just a couple of questions are you going to get any crowns when you get to heaven remember it's it's not about what you do in heaven it's about what you do now. And how do you think you're going to worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords when you get there? Are you going to be practiced up? <laughs> are you, are you going to want to run to the front of the, the front of the crowd and worship him? Here's the last question, and it's a big one. I really want you to give it some thought. Are you going to be among the church, the overcomers, or will you be left behind? I don't want you to be left behind. That's not going to be good. I want you to be with the church, with the bride of Christ, enjoying the marriage supper of the Lamb in your white garments because of uh, actually the righteousness of Jesus that covers you. Let's bow our heads and we'll, we'll pray and then we'll have a song of response. Father God, we just love you. We thank you so much for this day, for this, this message. We thank you, Father, for the um, eternal nature of your word as we look forward to completing the book of Revelation and understanding 
what you would have us to understand, knowing that, that by reading this book and listening to this book, you have promised a blessing. Father, I pray right now for everyone that is here that you would bless them dearly, that you would wonderfully, wonderfully bless them in the week to come. I pray that you would commune with us, Father God, more and more every day that you would teach us how to commune with you. May we see your great and mighty hand at work in our lives and in the life of this church. We love you. We worship you and we give you praise and glory and honor. For it is the, in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that we pray right now. Amen.